Hey fellow space explorers, it's Angry Turtle and today this video is about what to do when you want to have abilities of Nimble Fighter that can destroy everything in no time. But simultaneously you need to carry around 100 metric tons of stuff for your crafting and everything else. What do you do? How do you achieve both? The strategy is two ships. The dual ship approach. And it's actually cheaper than trying to squeeze everything in one ship. And let me demonstrate how it works. Now we are on board of incredibly fast and combat ready ship that do not have any cargo, but do have all the combat capabilities. If we open the ship page, you can notice that the cargo capacity is 242, but actually inside is 2676 of cargo, like 10 times more. So basically it is possible to overload cargo as much as you want there is no upper limit therefore your little fighter can always carry all your cargo but the problem is you cannot add anymore if it's over the weight cap you cannot add anymore but outside of that there is no negatives to it and i have here a second ship that is greatly over exaggerated you don't need so much i just was trying to figure out what is the absolute maximum, how much can you build. And I was able to increase the cargo capacity to 124,680, which is a lot. But the jump range dropped to 15 light years and I have like microscopic fuel tank. It's incapable of flying anywhere, to be honest. It's just too overloaded. But it's not a problem. And now let me show you how you use two ships. First, whenever you are traveling to new system and there is a risk there will be some combat, you take your combat ship, you take your fighter and you travel there. And we actually encounter some enemies, so that's why you take your fighter, you never know what you will encounter in the new spaces. Hit their engines. We are now to to go. Shouldn't be a problem. After easily dispatching both enemies, you can take a look what's in the system. Where do you want to land? There's usually three dots, so points of interest, but what if there is not a single point of interest, like hypothetical scenario, and you want to be able to return with your main ship? Then you basically select anything, you travel there. So we have an empty moon here, and we'll land. Now, as I landed in here, there is something called landing site on this moon, and it will surprisingly remain, like forever. I don't know if that's good or bad, but system runner. This particular moon already has a landing spot on it. Even if I don't place any camp or anything like that, let me go back to a city. So let's say now we have a scenario that I will not need a fighter capabilities as I will be like building, exploring, upgrading stuff, buying stuff from vendors, uh, doing done? everything on planets only. So and I swap the ship. Need view and modify okay, my ships and I make my stationary cargo ship as my home ship. It's my home ship. Very important thing when you'll be planning that the crew capacity of your cargo ship must be minimum of what your actual crew is. If it's less some crew will get unassigned and then can cause some bugs so make sure that every ship you are using has the minimum crew capacity of what your actual crew size is. I have four crew people, so I only need four crew capacity. As soon as it's swapped, it's parked in here and I will talk more about the design, how to do it from the beginning before it's so huge like in here and what's important. But now let me show you what you can do from this point. 
we are in New Atlantis. We'll go back, zoom out the map. The Rana system, as you can see, way outside of the reach. Like, there is no way. I cannot travel there at all. Like, the distance between last two stars is already too big for a jump drive wrench, and the fuel is not there either. But, let's cancel this. Let's just open the system. I was at this moon. There is still the landing area flag. And I can select it, and it works with every place you visited and land. It is a fast travel functionality, so this ship will get teleported here together with me. And there is no risk of any combat, so I don't need shield on this ship, I don't need weapons on this ship, I don't need good engine, I don't need any of that. And I can fast travel to every spot that I was before, so for most of my game time I need the cargo capacity and cargo capacity only. Maybe some functionalities on inside that are on this ship. And now let's just jump back across the universe to New Homestead. I will give you some tips and tricks when you'll be planning some spare ship for cargo purposes. Of course, basically any ship builder will do for that. But this one in particular is great as there is this special landing gear hey, at, at this you? moon, Titan. So this ship is already done, so let me select something else. Let's say that would be the ship that I want to change into a cargo ship, a storage, a functional ship. So what, what would I do? Opening the builder. First, as always, I recommend to scrap everything. It makes stuff so much easier. And now, what is important, there is a lot of things that every ship must have. Unfortunately, there is no work around for that. So first, the bay. And I'm putting back the bay that was already used on it, so I'm not paying any extra. Then I will add first habitat. And what I like to have on the cargo ship, it will be definitely one with passenger slots and bed, any type that contains a bed. And then I would add additional two pieces of habitats. One will be workshops. So I have workshops added to that. The placement as you like it. So it's not really anything important. And science lab. So there is a bed, there is a workshop, a science lab, and then lastly, depending on what cockpit you will be using, if you don't have a big cockpit, you will add one more habitat for crew stations. Okay, I decided to move it a little bit. I don't want to create a maze inside. Less options for AI to make bad connections, the better. So I would add one more for crew stations. I'm intentionally placing landing bay in front, as thanks to that, I will even put it more in front, thanks to that, the entrance is always close to wherever you land, on the landing pads in front of the technician. That helps a little bit on everyday problems. And then we are adding the cockpit. Usually just go for whatever was on the ship you destroyed, unless you want something different. But yeah, that's the cheapest option, reusing the same pieces that already have been there. And then I like to stretch it backwards as much as possible for the same reason, to push the entrance as close to where you naturally spawn on the landing pads as possible. And now essential, so reactor. And for the beginning, I would not be doing any upgrades. I will just put the one that is already there. It's actually quite a good one already there. There is no connections on the back of that. There's no connections on the back of this reactor. So I'm planning in the future. So I will put it into here. It will not be in the way. Then I need to add a grab drive. Grab drive will be actually the limiting factor of how much you can build. And this comes already with the best possible grab drive. So grab drive jump trust of 45. That's almost the best, but that's enough to put maximum cargo. So that's great. What else need to be here? There need to be a docker. Docker is straight on top. It's fine. 
then there will be a fuel tank required. Whatever you do, they will ask you to put fuel tank, even though you will not be flying anywhere. So you need to put a fuel tank. And I just recommend the cheapest. So either the one that was already there, so that, that will be the cheapest option for me. Or if you don't have any fuel tank, Ulysses M10 is the cheapest. So either one will do. And I will put that on the back again. I'm stretching it backwards. Then I add like a first cargo. And the best cargo is Galleon S204. But you need to be high level to unlock it. I'm pretty sure it's unlocking like after level 50 or so. If you don't have it yet, you just put the biggest cargo you have available. And then on the back, there need to be an engine. You think I can squeeze one more cargo than engine. For the engine, you just put only one and possibly the cheapest. For me, the cheapest is Amun 1 engine. That's it. You don't put more engines. Then check errors. Oh, I actually made it too long. So remove one. That's okay. And landing gears. That's why we are here. Those are the best landing gears that you can have at this place. Gear. Landing gear with four thrust per piece. So that's great. You don't need a lot of landing gear pieces to support quite high cargo. And from this point, it's already functional. I can save it. So then you just keep adding cargo all around the place and landing gears as you go. So then there is no much expense. As you can notice at this point, uh, even saving stuff. Oh, one thing. Max crew is free, so that's not enough. Max crew is determined by the reactor, class C is free, and number of weapons. So I need to add weapons, unfortunately. So I will add some weapon attachments and some weapons on it. Oh, I have two attachments in here, that's great. So then I'm going for the cheapest, so Mauler 104L cannon, and I will add two that increases my crew capacity by one, that's four. That's enough. The mobility zero, absolutely fine. And that's how you do it. And it's ready and it's even cheaper than the ship I used. So when I save it, I will save money. I will not spend, I will save credits. So that's how you do it, how you organize and start using a dual ship strategy. Way more powerful than trying to squeeze everything into one ship. You can have two ships, specialized. The weapons need to be assigned, even if you are not gonna use them. And that is everything that you need to know about dual ship strategy. So we'll be ready for anything and everything. And never again you will worry how to store your stuff and that there is not enough storage. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.